Welcome to Market Madness as Bulls clear a key hurdle. Can they clear the final one to reaffirm this great bull run? Stay tuned, we'll discuss this and much more. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV. First up, don't forget, click show more for additional information and links on today's video. Also, if you find this video of value, please do consider subscribing. First up, the numbers. Weekend, 3-9. Lots of green. NASDAQ tech continues to be the big one year to date, just like last year. A little bit unusual. Coming to life, small caps. Finally, maybe they've cleared their hurdle. We'll talk about that. And let's get to the big charts. So here, when we look at the charts, first up, S&P, year to date, starting at the bottom, VIX, volatility, we broke through 16, that is a good sign. Next up, we have momentum, MACD, you see it pushing up, that is a short term buy signal, good sign as well. At the top, RSI, relative strength of the market, continues to pull up. Bounced off 50 and we've got some room to run. So let's see what happens this week. And then the meat of the chart, couple big hurdles this week. 27.42, we cleared that. We did clear it before and failed. So we'll see what happens. But this time we got above 27.80 to close on Friday. That was our most recent high. So now we've created a new higher high, which is a good bullish signal. So overall, looks pretty good. Next, the biggest hurdles of all is that gap line right up there in that range. And then all-time highs. If we can break above that, this is a continuation of a long bull market. But Friday matters most, so we'll see. At this point, I'm going to go back to my green signal on the short term, and we will move on to the midterm. When you look at the midterm weekly, of course, it looks good. But overall, when you look at the bottom there, momentum, we still have a conflicting signal. MACD, momentum, that is a negative cross through. A little bit of a button hook at the bottom there, so we'll follow that. But right now, no doubt, bullish uptrend. So still, midterm signals, positive. And then the last one, of course, is our monthly view. And as you would expect, positive as well. Everything is pushing up. Looks good. End of the month, obviously negative. We'll watch that to see if that was a turn. But as of right now, still to be determined. So again, short-term, mid-term, long-term, all positive right now. Next up is market breadth. As you would expect, strong. Above 60% is bullish, below 40 is bearish. Here's your 200 day moving average. Those companies on the S&P above their average 200 day price. Across the board, strong. S&P 71, NASDAQ 78, and big move with small and mids, 65%. So they both look to be getting stronger as well. 50 day, a shorter period, but still looks very good. S&P bullish now, 64%. When we're looking at mid caps, 64%. And then also smalls at 65%. So again, all above 60, bullish. And then NASDAQ at 74%. So market breadth looks to be very strong. Speaking of the NASDAQ, what a great looking chart here. We broke out to a new all-time high. So again, very bullish, also pointing up. And at the top of the chart, relative strength at 65 tells us still has a way to go before we see either consolidation or exhaustion. So again, heading into this week, tech looks to be the big one. Next up, let's talk about the sectors.
So here I have the S&P in the top five sectors by percentage of the S&P. And big move again last week. We talked about where we did not have participation and everybody joined the party this week. Financials, health, consumer, discretion all went up strong last week. Industrials, the only laggard, although it did go up, is consumer staples. So how about on my radar? Yes, I do have something to talk about. I know a lot of people have been disappointed about this, but we are looking at a couple of areas that look good again. So our first one is something I talked about quite a bit in the fall into this year. Oil added it across the board, took off really nice bullish uh, trend there. And then all of a sudden, boom, when the market corrected, oil really corrected as well. So a little bit of a consolidation, but I'm looking here, if we can get back above the 50 day moving average, this is a nice sector to add some dollars to. Overall, I've been holding it, did not sell, but for new accounts, I'm looking to add this week. Next is biotech. One of my favorite sectors over the last few years is very volatile. As you see here, here's a three year daily look. You see the golden cross highlighted there. We've gone up, pulled back, went up, hit all time highs, failed and came back. But we broke again above a trend line, so that looks good. Long way to go relative strength, momentum pointing up. So again, biotech is really pointing up. And then I look at a weekly chart here on biotech. That is a classic cup and handle formation. So again, very bullish in nature. Treasuries continues to be the big story. Although last week, nothing seemed to bother the market, whether it was political, inflation, or treasuries. Treasury spreads went up just a little bit last week, but I'm more concerned about the rise of the treasury. We closed out at 2.9 for the week. Again, this is our most important chart of 2018. If we get to 3% or more importantly, break above 3%, We've got some issues here that are going to have to be addressed. I don't see the market liking that action, so we'll continue to watch this as well. So, what keeps me up at night? <gasps> well, not too much right now, surprisingly, just a couple slides. I mean, overall, last week, fundamentals look pretty good, but there's a couple charts that still I look at. Here is what's called the Buffett Indicator, which is corporate equities to GDP. And you see we're the second highest in history. So have some concerns there. Next, margin debt. Again, look at margin debt, a reverse chart. The red, I mean, again, at all time highs. Really, everybody's jumping back in. And if we get a margin call here or some other issues, that could be a problem. So that has me a little bit concerned. The other thing is, I do talk about market breadth, but remember, the S&P is cap weighted. Okay, so when you see blue going up there, that's the S&P, and going down is the equal weight. So this chart is set up S&P relative to, meaning relative performance to the S&P, and you see the black really pointing down. So that's a concern. Equal weight is not performing as well as the cap weighted, which is to be expected because it's a very thin market. Wrapping things up, fear and greed. This week back up to 44, still a little bit of fear there, but last week at 10, so we've had a big move here. Again, all indicators, positive, short term, mid term, and long term. So as always, thank you so much for watching. This is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV.